Hello everybody, it's your old pal Toonie here and welcome back to another video. Yes, it has been a year since I posted a video to YouTube and I am so sorry. I am notoriously bad at keeping up with content here, but I have once again, for probably the seventh or eighth year in a row, made my New Year's resolution to finally be consistent with video content here on YouTube. So let's see if 2022 <laughs> is gonna be my year of consistency. Today I'm just gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process of creating this painting here. Uh, and as well, for the voiceover, I'll be answering some questions that I got over on Instagram. I kind of did like a little Q&A, ask me anything, and I picked out a few of my faves. So we can, yeah, go over that while you watch me paint in the background. And just a heads up, I have a whole section in the middle where my big chonky head was blocking the camera. So I had to sub in some clips that I had taken on my phone for Instagram stories. So apologies in advance, you will see that, but I'm a pro YouTuber, you know? We're getting there. Anyway, on to your cues. Question number one, what kind of gouache am I using? This is acrylic gouache. I use the brands Holbein and Turner Colorworks primarily. And I have gone into quite a bit of detail on some of my other videos. If you want to go check out those in terms of like, what is acrylic gouache? How does it work? Blah, blah, blah. So definitely go give those a listen for a more detailed answer to that question. But yeah, this is acrylic gouache and I love it. <laughs> Question number two, how long does it usually take to make a painting? I classify myself as a very temperamental and impatient artist, so if a painting takes me more than about five hours, I'm kind of losing interest in the painting at that point. So I would say my average is between three and four hours up to five. I have these lofty aspirations to like whip out my full-size easel and do some big ass paintings on that, but I don't know if I have the stamina for it. Maybe if I keep working on these little pieces, eventually I'll be able to sit for like, you know, two five hour sessions, two days in a row or something like that. But for now, keeping it short, keeping it sweet. <laughs> Question number three, how many brushes do you have and which do you use most? I don't know if any of you guys out there are also painters and can relate to this, but there's something about brushes that just, they just seem to like accumulate in my life. I don't feel like I go out of my way to buy brushes very often, yet I somehow have 20, 30, I, who knows? I would say though that I usually only use about three to five different brushes uh, per painting, certainly, but kind of in general. And they're primarily round brushes and filbert brushes. So I'll use a couple of different sizes of the round, usually on like the quite small to slightly larger than quite small. Um, and then for the filbert, I have this one here you can see is like my small one. And then I have a larger one that I was doing for the big patches of color. None of my brushes are very fancy though. I always kind of opt for the stuff on the cheaper end. I don't really want to spend more than 10 or $15 on a brush that I know I'm gonna like trash in the course of a year or something like that. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about cost and just focus on what sizes feel the best to you. Question four, I would say is probably one of the questions that I get the most often. And it's also a question that I feel like I can't really give you a super good answer to, which is how much water should I add to my gouache? Unfortunately, there's no like, one part water to two parts squash that I can kind of just give you a measurement and tell you it's all it all comes down to like feel and that's something that you get used to as you practice I feel that gouache kind of gets a bad reputation as being a really difficult medium to work with there's a few reasons for this but I think that this water situation is like the main one but the truth of the matter is, is the more that you use it, the more that you'll understand exactly how much water you wanna add to get like the particular effect that you're looking for. So for example, here when I'm doing my lining, I have watered down the paint like considerably more than when I was doing my, uh, filling in the like larger areas of color. Like I want it to be almost the consistency of ink. Whereas when I'm doing the larger areas, I just water it down so that when I put the brush to the paper, I'm not getting any feathered edges or any kind of scratchy textures. But if you do want to use that for like a certain effect in your painting, then that's totally valid too. So there's no like right amount of water to add. But once you start using it and getting familiar with the material, you'll understand how much water you personally like to add for each effect. Question number five is how fast does the gouache dry on the palette? 
Uh, this is probably another reason why people find gouache to be very challenging and perhaps frustrating is that the wa or the the paint does in fact dry very quickly on your palette. Uh, I use a ceramic palette here. I've also used plastic and I feel that the paint stays a little bit more active on the plastic than it does on the ceramic, but I like the texture and how easy the ceramic is to clean, which I'll get into in a minute. So yeah, the big thing about gouache is you kind of just want to add as much paint as you think you're going to need at any given time, and once you start mixing it with the water on the palette, your timer starts ticking really quickly. When you leave it in larger blobs, uh, it takes a little longer to dry, so again, something that you'll get used to as you practice. Yeah, just take it one step at a time. <laughs> I'm just going to interject here and talk a little bit about what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, after I finished my gouache pass, I wanted to cover this character full of little animal themed tattoos, and I kind of hummed and hawed over whether or not I was going to do that in paint or in Posca marker or what. Ended up going with colored pencil, and I'm really happy with the effect. Uh, I decided to leave this part whole and then just speed up the footage so hopefully it has a cool effect it's i can't actually see it in my video editor it's just like glitching around <laughs> so hopefully it looks cool when i export it um yeah anyway all about trying new things you know what i mean the next question question number six is what prep work do i do for each painting as you can see to the top left of uh, what i'm doing on the screen there there's a sketch printed out that is my reference for the tattoos that i'm doing this was the sketch that i created before heading into painting at all. I do it digitally. Right now I'm using an iPad, but I but I also have like a few other tablets that I use. Um, and then I use the iPad screen to transfer the sketch, the digital sketch onto my final paper, which is a cold press watercolor paper. I like doing the sketch separate from the actual final uh, illustration for a couple of reasons, but the main reason is that if I mess up the final illustration, I don't have my sketch trapped underneath all these layers of paint that I can't possibly recover. I can just go back to the original sketch and start new. So it kind of just gives me like a little bit of insurance if I make a little boo-boo <laughs> that I'm not totally uh, screwed. The other thing that I do to prep is I will create a color map, which is basically the sketch that you see in the top left corner with the colors on it. I choose everything in advance so I don't have to make any decisions while I'm painting. I find it extremely challenging to choose paint colors correctly as I go. And the thing is, is I can always cover up something and paint over it with a different layer of gouache if I like choose the wrong color and, and don't end up liking it in context, but it saves me a lot of time and effort if I just have everything planned out in advance because it's a lot easier to change a color digitally than it is to do a whole nother layer of gouache. Question number seven is what does cleanup look like after painting? People were asking about brush cleaners, sealants, and cleaning the palette. So I don't use a brush cleaner. I don't let any paint dry on my brushes ever. So anytime I'm done using a brush, I'll give it a rinse in my little water cup that I have on the side. And then at the end of the painting, I'll go and just give everybody a good deep clean in some like lukewarm water. Just scrub it out in the sink. And like you kind of want to reshape your brushes as you leave them to dry this is only kind of important but if you if you for example store them brush tip down in a cup you're gonna end up with the brush kind of like bending and you just obviously you don't want that so I store them uh, brush tip up and I let them dry flat before I put them away I don't use anything to seal my paintings. I did a little bit of Googling because somebody asked and I was like, oh man, maybe I should be doing something to seal my paintings. But uh, if you do want to, it sounds like there's um, acrylic varnishes that you can use and it's recommended to use matte acrylic varnishes so you keep the matte quality of the paint. But otherwise it doesn't seem super integral. The thing about the acrylic gouache is that even if I was to spill water on this painting, like nothing's gonna move. It's all gonna stay perfectly in place. Uh, granted, hopefully this painting is not in a situation where I'm going to spill a bunch of water on it, so yeah, I, I don't bother to seal it. When it comes to cleaning my palette, as I mentioned earlier, I use the ceramic palette and this one is so easy to clean. All I have to do is soak each little uh, palette hole <laughs> in a little bit of lukewarm water for like just a couple of minutes and then I can go in with a paper towel and wipe away all of the paint, it's completely loosened from the ceramic top, and yeah, super easy to then just toss all those paint scraps away in the garbage. 
I think when it comes to like my paint water, I'm okay with flushing that down the sink or the toilet, but um, the big chunks of paint, it's like a little bit more obvious that what it is is basically plastic. So I do recommend that you toss that in the trash rather than uh, pouring it down for the poor little fish to get a hold of. Question number eight is what do you do when you can't see your sketch lines beneath the paint? As you probably noticed as I've been going, I've been painting right over all of the sketch lines that I transferred onto the final watercolor paper. As I do that, you might not be able to tell from the actual footage, but most of the time I can very, very faintly see those sketch lines beneath the colors, and I'll do that in a way where I won't uh, put the most opaqueness of the paint over top of the lines, so I'll either like fill in the opaque in the in the broader areas and then get right up to the line and kind of leave it just a little bit translucent where the lines are going to be or for example with the yellow it's a very translucent paint doesn't have a lot of white mixed in so no matter how many layers i put on i'm usually going to see those lines um, underneath anyway but i also as, as again you can see in the top left have this sketch reference always up that i'm always double checking as i go basically if I lose track of something on the finished piece, I can just look up at that sketch and be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's supposed to be there even though I can't see it anymore. With the tattoos though that I'm doing here, I decided to freehand them kind of because I wanted to challenge myself uh, and also because I couldn't really think of a good way to transfer the sketch for these without it like potentially becoming really messy or making some sort of weird mistake. So if you're watching closely, you can tell that I've made some changes from the sketch to the final and a lot of that is me just kind of vibing with what the space that I need to fill um, demands and also kind of coming up with ideas that I think are cool on the fly. I think it ended up working overall kind of having a bit of like a janky feel to the tattoos because the point of the illustration like you as the observer are going to look at it you're not going to be scrutinizing every single drawing that i put into the tattoo collage you're just going to kind of like get the overall impact of the composition of the piece so if there's a little imperfection here and there it's not going to like make or break it the last question here question number nine how do you avoid the paper going lumpy quote uh, so as you can tell, the paper has warped underneath. Um, I don't, I don't really mind the warping paper. I think it's just kind of like part of the process. If you choose a paper that is meant for these wet mediums, this is a cold press watercolor paper, then you're going to get like the minimum effect of that lumpiness. So just, just roll with it. Um, there are some things you can do like pre-stretching your paper. It's not something I've ever done because it sounds really tedious, but it's like, I think you wet the entire piece of paper and then you like somehow are stretching it so that it is already warped basically, but it's warped and flat. Do a little research into that if it really does bother you, but otherwise um, don't worry about it because it's everybody is dealing with that. And ideally you're going to be framing this you know, as a original piece, um, whether that's like you sell it to the client or the, the buyer loose and then they'll frame it. But like, yeah, <laughs> it's it's not meant to just float around as a piece of paper. So it will be flat where where it settles. It will be flattened. That's pretty much it for the questions here. Um, I will just kind of like wrap things up with some final thoughts, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I've only been working with acrylic gouache for a few years now, and I don't have a lot of time to do a lot of traditional painting. The majority of my work is actually digital, and I really treasure the time that I can find to do these traditional paintings and learn more every single time that I make something new. Now this is the part of the video where I'm going to shout out my patrons. Thank you to everyone on Patreon who supports my work because the this is a piece for my print club and i probably wouldn't be creating very much traditional art if i didn't have the motivation of bringing you guys these cool one-off monthly prints so thank you so much for supporting me there if you are interested in seeing more of my work i post um kind of a little bit everywhere but for the most part on instagram and then as i mentioned i'm going to be better about posting here on youtube i swear so thank you so much for watching this video and yeah see you next time